Hey guys, welcome back to another house surface practice video. In this one, we are going to work on that tricky shape. First, let me turn this off and it's in a sphere. At first glance, it seems like a cylinder, but in fact, it is a capsule. So this is why I am starting off with a sphere. Let me hit NMB to see the wireframes. I will set this to hexahedron. Then I will duplicate that, hide it, then I will set this back to standard and increase this up to say 100 because I want this object as smooth as possible. The reason is I will be using this for projection purposes. Let me call this Pro and hide it from the viewport. Notice I am not disabling it, I just want to disable it from the viewport. Now let's go back to the original sphere and work on the density. I will go to the front view and start to lower that down to, let's say, something like 18. 14, I believe, is going to be too low to get that hole, especially in the middle. So I will set this to 18. Next up, I will try to even out the polygon sizes. To do that, I will select the sphere, hold my shift, and it in a shrink wrap deformer. Once I have done that, I will drop this one into the target object tab. Nothing is going to change because I need another object on top of this one. So I will go to the sphere, hold down shift and add in a smoothing deformer. Now, as you can see, the smoothing deformer is evening out the polygon sizes. I just need to tweak it a bit like 16. I am trying to focus on that pole. The polygons surrounding that pole should be as even as possible. I am 100% sure that we are going to get a pinching or an artifact around that pole because it is on a curved surface. So to eliminate that error as best as possible, I'm trying to even out that area specifically. So 20 is going to be okay. Next up, let's apply these deformers. Right click, connect objects and delete. From now on, we do not that projection, so I will just delete it. Now let me delete the bottom half completely. This is both a capsule and a cylinder. So in that case, I need to extrude that edge down, say five times. Let's go to the front view and extrude this down five times. By the way, I'm watching out the polygon sizes. I want to keep this as even as possible. That seems fine, which means that I can duplicate this and call this projection. Let's hide the original sphere and drop this one into a subdivision surface. I'm going to hit NNB to see the density. I will set this to 3 because I want this object as smooth as possible. The reason is, again, I will be using this for projection purposes. I will just make this subdivision surface editable. I will hit C on the keyboard. Let's call it back pro and hide it from the viewport. Just double click on this top light. Let's go back to this one. The first thing I am going to do is I'm going to delete that half. Also these points. I will drop this one into a symmetry. It will initially mirror on the X, so we are okay with the orientation. I will just enable weld. This will basically weld the points in the middle. We can actually Tell it by the shading on and off. Anyways, let's go back to the shape. The next thing I want to work on is these edges. I basically want to flatten them out. To do that, first I will select that edge. Then I will hold down Ctrl and Shift and select the last edge. This is going to select the edges in between. Now let's go to the front view. Oh, sorry. I need to be really careful because I don't want to move the position of that point. That point is part of that perfect circle. You know, you don't want to move that point. Otherwise, it is going to cause some artifacts around that point. So we need to preserve the position of that point and that one as well. So the starting point of the scale should be these points. As I said, I don't want to move them around. These are just perfect right now. What I'll do next, I'll enable the access mode and click on that point. Then I will turn this off. T start to scale on the X and stop at zero. Nice. Now let me go into points mode. Slide tool. 
I will work on that poll. As I said, that poll is going to cause some problems on on that on these polygons. I'm pretty sure about that. So I will try to even out the polygon sizes around the pole. I will do that by eyeballing. It doesn't have to be perfect. I believe it is time to drop this one into a sub D. I will select the symmetric, hold down Alt, and drop this one into a sub D. Two is going to be too much, so I will set this to one. Now I want you to bring your attention to that polygon. As you can see, it looks a bit distorted, and I am sure this is also going to cause some artifacts around that point. I want a flow that goes around the detail. To do that, I will show you a nice trick. I will select the mesh, select these edges. Let me enable this back. Right click and click on dissolve. Notice what it's going to do. Click on it. I will hit Ctrl Z and Ctrl Y a few times to see exactly what is going on. Basically, by dissolving out these edges, now I have a perfect flow that follows the detail, like these edges. At first look, dissolving out these edges may seem crazy. As you know, in this workflow, we try to keep things as quiet as possible, but subdivision surface has a unique feature which converts engines into quads in the most perfect way. We are not done yet because I will project this one into a perfect mesh, this one. So first, let me apply this subdivision surface. Remember, I set this to one. Two is going to be too much. One is going to be perfect. I will right click and click on connect objects and delete. This is going to apply everything below the subdivision surface. Now that I have subdivided my mesh, it is time to project this one onto another object. This is why I, you know, created this mesh, this smooth mesh. I will hide it, select my original mesh, hold down shift and add in a shrink wrap deformer and I will drop this object into the target object tab. Let's hit N and B. I want to see what's going on with the mesh. Turn this on and off. Okay, seems pretty fine. Now, let me apply this again. Same method, right click and click on connect objects and delete. Now I want to work on that point. Again, this is another poll, so we need to be really careful with this one. This point is again part of that edge loop, which is a perfect circle. So I want to fix the position of that point. I want this to be just like that one. By doing so, I will eliminate any possible artifacts around here. So to do that, I will slide it down to a nervy point. Then I will move it up. By the way, the position of that point is not perfect either. So maybe we can slide it down as well because that loop is looking just perfect. Then I will move it up. Then I will slide that down as much as possible. Then move it up. I'm going to drop this one into a sub D. Hit N and A. I will look around here. Okay, looks perfect. But what about that pole? Yeah. It may not come through the video, but I see a tiny amount of distortion over here. So I will move that point around. Okay, that looks just perfect. I don't want to adjust that point over and over again. So why don't we just delete these points? Let me make sure that this is the right one. Okay, so I need to delete that half. Then, hold down out, it in a symmetry. I need to align the Z as well. So, enable welds with NNB. You can also enable subdivision surface. Seems fine. Now, I will apply the symmetry, hit C. Delete that symmetry. 
it seems like I forgot to flatten out these edges. So I'm going to select them. I will hit E, Move Tool, then Enable Access Tool or Mod, and click on that point because I don't want to change the position of that edge or that point. Now I will hit T, start to scale. I should turn off Access Mod. I will start to scale all time sheet and stop at zero. Same here. Select the first edge, hold down Ctrl and Shift. I will enable access mode, click on that point, turn it off, start to scale and stop at zero. Now I will extrude these in. Extrude, extrude in. Now to cap off this hole, I will first go to the top view and deselect the edges at the very top. I'm going to deselect four edges on that side and four edges on that side. Or we can deselect more to have a more uniform mesh. Now right click, stitch and shift tool, hold down shift and connect these matching points. Now let's see how many empty points we have. It says seven. So I will drop in a loop cut right in the middle with seven cuts. Now I will go into the edge mode, double click on the loop, Let's select these edges, stitch and shift tool one more time and connect these matching points. Here we go. Let's do the same thing here. Double click, deselect, stitch and save tool, connect the matching points. This is going to be it. Next up, let me work on these edges. I will hit T, scale this in. Another extrusion by holding Ctrl and scaling this in. Then close polygon hole tool, close the hole, enable patch. It seems like that new geo is aligned with the world exactly which is nice next up i believe it is time to you know sharpen up these edges so first i will hit v select and grab loop selection tool and i will select edges that i want to sharpen up now right click bevel i will go into solid mode and bevel these out let me hit q to see okay that seems fine Oh, sorry, I forgot to level up these polygons. Let me select these polygons by holding right mouse and group up the selection a few times. Then I will select these polygons again by holding right mouse. And I will just move this up. Now I will include these polygons as well to my selection. I don't want to squish things up around here. Now I will move this around here. Yeah, now it seems quite even. Let's go back to the edge mode. These edges should be selected. Bevel, bevel these out in solid mode. That pole is still bothering me. So let me set this to world and move it in slightly. Let's see if this is going to fix it. Yeah, nice. Now let me talk about something else. I believe this mesh is a perfect example of why we should keep our meshes as uniform as possible. I have been talking about that a lot in nearly all of my tutorials. You will see how it is easy to add in details once you have a really uniform mesh. I am talking about the sizes of these polygons. These are looking quite even. Let me apply the circle tool. I will make any set, move this on the Z, Alt and Control, extrude in these two times. Then I will grab these edges and bevel them in solid mode. You will notice these triangles. You can just set this to uniform. It is going to fix it. Hit Q. And here we go. It is going to be that easy as long as you have a uniform mesh. This time around, Let's try to open up a larger hole. So I will select this once, then hit U and Y to, to grow up my selection. Circle tool. This time let's enable project to surface. Seems nice, but you need to be really careful, especially with that edge. As you can see, it is shorter than that one that may cause some lumpiness around that edge. We should also watch out these polygons as we don't want to stretch these polygons. Otherwise, just like what we had here, uh, these polygons will cause 
artifacts. Let me select this again and make it set. Move these in. Extrude twice. Select these edges. And bevel them out in solid modes. I will hit Q. Looks just perfect. We may get some artifacts around here. Yeah. I hope it comes through the video, but I can fix it. Just like how I fixed that point. So I'm going to slide that down to that point. Because the position of the point is just perfect to hold up a curved surface. So I'm going to move that down. Move tool and move it up. That should remove that artifact. Yeah, exactly. Let me do the same thing with that point. Move it down then move it up. That point is looking good though. I mean that polygon and that polygon. I suppose the reason is these are on a more curved surface than that one. We can finally test the shape out with a default material. Let's put this one on and I will set this to black and move it around, especially on the tricky parts like here. Seems perfect. And here. I hope you did learn something new and enjoy the tutorial. You can also find this kind of practice tutorials on my Patreon. So you can check it out. You can find the link below. And I will see you in the next ones. Bye.